can't accept and ignore Just kicking down all the doors Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it It's gotta be real big I gotta make it just for my kids And for their kids as kids That's wealth years and years Promise my brother soon as he out And finish this bid We finna do it bigger than anybody ever did The odds is real big Job that's real big Satan trying a little My God is real big Stayed up on the grind And the cars is real big I gotta do it big The only way that I can live others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions if you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do, that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic. I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. You sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. Becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. It is your host with the most acoustics and I am joined here today by my boy, Soy. And we are here with week five of ECAC Smash Crew Battles first best of three. 
festival. So are you ready? Oh, I'm absolutely ready. We've got a, a heck of a game ahead of us. Two undefeated squads through four weeks of action. St. John's going up against Benedictine University. A battle of undefeated, so potentially some some uh, stakes in terms of overall seeding when the postseason comes around. I mean, this is going to be so much fun. Yeah, yeah. So both these teams, by staying undefeated, have basically uh, completed their qualifications. They're both going to make it. So now there's more fight for pride and seeding, right? Who is the top dog? I'm be honest. I'm going to have to go with the Lord on this one, Benedict University. You know what I'm saying? Listen, <laughs> listen, them brothers got the holy mix-ups, you know? <laughs> they uh they're they're an interesting squad for sure i mean we were looking at some of their their players uh before this and it's interesting how it's a lot of younger guys i mean this squad seems relatively new a lot of underclassmen in ter terms of you know freshmen and sophomore uh coming into this scene also some new names joining as of this year so it's going to be interesting to see but we're getting ready for two number one with the ejj going in first between Tonto and the Diddy Kong. And EJJ, also new to the St. John's squad, looked really good on this Diddy Kong last time we saw him. And speaking of looking good right now, hold on, managing to turn it around. Edge. I like this. All right, so this isn't two characters you see often, especially in online. Um, but, okay, two, li two lightweights who are combo masters. So, that would be nice. All right, I liked it. Great stage control. The clash there was, was really good. And, and, and EJJ, uh, the movement that EJJ has is usually pretty on point, especially when using those monkey flips. He, he never really pulls those out. So good to kind of call out on that first dash tech. But there are the follow-up grabs. Those are going to be really important for Men Knight to get. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And right now, Men Knight, great spot dodge right there. Tries to go for the back here. All right. Play for like a great confirm right here. Nice dash attack. Not being able to follow up again, anything. All right, off stage. What's the game right here? Oh, peanuts, bananas, in the up smash. Gonna be able to take the kill. All right. That was so well done. That was very well done. I mean, it, it can be really hard to track down where Men Knight wants to go from ledge, and just the read there to get that banana. Very well done to take that first stock, and, and a pretty early lead because. At these percents, it's not necessarily the easiest thing for Manic to take the stock wow! unless they get an edge guard like that. The nair on the barrels was so clean and just not enough fuel in the tank to get that. Okay, right there. Very good right there. You definitely want to edge guard at a, at a percent like that where you don't relatively lose anything. And right now, the Meta Knight is right there in the lead. Already at 38% on EGJ. Oh, you gotta be careful. That monkey flip is gonna get you punished, brother. Alright, a little bit of off stage game. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Oh, you're getting punished. You got to stop throwing fruit, brother. This economy is not worth it. Oh, no. Oh. All right. I'm going to. He took 1.2% that entire stock. Look at the. I know Meta Knight's a combo character, but like. The, to get all of that and not get hit once was so well done by Kid. Listen, listen. People forget this character used to be one of the greatest menaces of all time. And you know, some, <laughs> sometimes he still gets the job done. No, it's not, not as broken as Bro Meta Knight. But you know, we take what we can get. Right. And you know what? You know what's really been uh, so successful in this matchup? He's been punishing EJJ for just throwing out Banana. He's like, listen, I will grab your projectile and I'll use it against you. I, I do not mind. Look at it. Grab again. Say, just, listen, just, just give me the fruit. Okay. And and that tool being off the board, too, to have that banana be gone, that's a huge part of Diddy Kong's kit. Good recovery in, though. This is a good grab. This could be an opening for EJJ, but they got to make something out of it. And just all those jumps just threatening, not pulling in the trigger on any early moves. And an early up B. I love the risk there, but still not enough to take a stop. Yeah, absolutely. But they're at 94%. Gotta be careful. Nice. Good tech chase after the up. Throw into the up here. Gonna be able to get a kill. Oh, tornado. Oh, but you missed the punish. You needed that. All right, nice little gentleman. Oh, the double nair. Oh, you see the movement on this bit? Jeez. <laughs> the coverage just being very careful about any option. Oh my, hey, getting yeah. risky with it. <laughs> hey, listen, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta let them know you need business. All 
right? Just a gut read. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, listen, like, Diddy Kong is at 118. He's not a heavyweight, so it's not like you have any really good combo confirms against him. So right now, what you're really just looking for is a tech chase or a hard call out. Oh my goodness, that call might have been a little bit too hard right there. Oh, but we got the banana again. Oh! Slip and slide! I love it. That was that was so clean. That was so well done. I, I was I mean it just like you said, the, the use of picking up the banana every single time and there just instantly saying, Alright, we throw out the nair. I mean Mennonite's aerials are really good. Yeah. And that nair is deceptively strong. I mean that's how he got stock number one off the edge guard too off the barrels. So that that was just a clean, quick pickup too, very unexpected. And you saw EJJ too, towards the end of that uh, series, try and play a little bit more passively, try and take his time, trying to figure out the game plan a bit more. But Meta Knight is one of the faster characters in this game. They're not gonna give you that much time. Yeah, Meta Knight, I think is actually like, I think he's, he's definitely within the top 20. I don't, almost, he's like, he's like definitely one of the faster characters in the game, only outsped by like people like Fox, Roy, Quam, other incredibly right. fast characters. And like the, the problem in, in that situation is when you are able to read whenever someone wants to call out Banana, if they're not quick enough about like canceling off a platform to getting it, you can easily just punish it. Every time that they did, uh, that EJJ threw out Banana without being able to immediately retrieve it, uh, the Meta Knight player just right there, picks it up and then just uses it to continue the game. Because if you have a if you have that high of running speed, very safe normals, very safe aerials, and good awareness, you can absolutely just turn away that situation, uh, and that's what we saw just now in that match. But luckily, DJJ was able to take two stocks. And remember, lives are shared in these crew battles, so the Knight player is going to lose two stocks. One. So this is a, uh, a button check here uh, that you're going to see on screen. But this is going to be bootleg coming in for the side of St. John's. Bootleg on the Byleth. And bootleg, I think, one of the players that, you know, that this St. John's squad is really going to depend upon to, to make some plays here. And it's going to be interesting to see how they do against Kid. Uh, especially with Kid only having that one stock. That that stock can really make a huge difference here because now anything that Kid gets is just kind of gravy on top, right? They got that one stock lead. If they can get anything more, they're going to continue to be in the lead headed into that next set. And you've got now this potential uh, character counter pick to go up against. You know that you're going up against Bootleg. You know that you're going up against probably the Violet uh, on, I believe, Small Battlefield. This is the, the stage that we're going to get for this next game. So potentially a huge turning point early in the series here uh after the players get reset yeah absolutely right you, you, you already you already know what you're going to be so you're ready for it you only have one stock to play with right that at the same time the most dangerous animal is a cornered one right if i have one stock left to give and, I, and my my teammates are already in a position where we're technically out i might just do it i might <laughs> i might just have to do it to them Right? No no reason that I have to hesitate on any of my decisions. You know what I'm saying? I can I can simply just go for what I want, right? I've already done my job. Now now it's like you said, this is extra. This is the gravy on top of the mashed potatoes. Right? It, it it really is. And here's the scary thing too. You saw how clean Kid was with those edge guards. They were trying I mean it was a there were a couple of heavy reads, but I mean they were able to take that first stock very well, uh, very cleanly on that that first set against EJJ. If they can find those edge guards here, Byleth is a, a grapple recovery, you can, or a tether recovery, I should say. You, sh you can probably land some of those, but I think the bigger problem is the damage output that Bootleg can do. Men like could die very early, so it's a, it's a very thin line that Kid has to tote here. At the same time, right, Kid also has that, oh my goodness, that was a trying to get an R read. Oh, oh no. yeah, shoots and ladders. <laughs> Shoots and ladders, we tried it. All right, so so this is the other thing, right? Violet is also heavier than Diddy Kong, which does allow Kid to play a little bit more of his combo game. And we saw right there, no string of up here. Bootleg has to be careful because very easily, this could end up with you getting combo to death. Right? I mean, already at, at 102. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> what a tech, though. Oh, double Answered tech. Right back. 
That was so well done from Bootleg, but the parry didn't lead to much. And it still feels like Bootleg has a lot of work to do. They're at 121, oh but there's a lot skills. of rage on a light character like Meta Knight. Another one of those kind of stray hits might actually do the trick if they get the sweet spot, but that spacing's got to be on point. Yeah, but Bootleg definitely knows what position they're in. They're allowed to force the issue. Um, because of the fact they only need to take one stop. They only need one good hit. Oh, and that didn't kill! Great DI right there from Kid. Oh no. Alright, nice. Get back on stage. Wow! In the down B to get the counter hit off leg. Gonna take one stop. Alright, and now, now Kid is just, he's like, I'm in 103. Oh, you're dead. dead, dead. The second that down tilt <laughs> yeah. trips you up, and the second you miss the tech, you just know oh, yeah. it's over from that point on. <laughs> said my man his laces were untied he tripped <laughs> and everyone at the schoolyard just pointed at him and laughed and then that was it i, I knew i knew when once you once you miss attack against violence especially as like a light character it, it, it's not fun it's not fun. she has a very good kill for friends uh a lot of uh a lot of down tilt to up here uh potentially up b to out there or up b into oh it depends it depends but she has a lot of routes but yeah all right, but that's good. Kid takes another stop off of the team, which means they're still at a net positive. So now, depending on the next player that Benedict pulls in, they can maybe even take a two stop uh, off of them and put themselves in a way better position. But they're already in a great one right now, right? One stop lead, you like it. Not only a one stop lead, but they now have that, that kind of character counter pick choice if they so choose, right? They know that Bootleg is locked into that Byleth, and now they can kind of play with that and see, okay, well, Violet may or may not like certain stages or, Bi you know, we've got a character that can do really well against Violet. I'm not 100% sure what uh, uh, Benedictine has in their pocket, but they've got that option now uh, headed into this next set. But I, I will say, I liked what I saw from Bootleg early there. You saw, uh, what was it? The, the up B at low percent sent him up and immediately he went for the down air. So Bootleg is not afraid to go for those aggressive plays early. And if you can get an early stock like that, that is exactly what St. John's needs in a scenario like this to get themselves back in the game, to get themselves back to even footing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, when I saw immediate tech into up B into down air, I was like, ah. This this brother understands. Like the point of the point of crew battles like this is you want to put the team into a stock deficit any way you can, right? Because in truth, uh, while it's, it's more like a sprint, it's a relay sprint, right? So at times you wanna you wanna pass that baton whatever way you can by taking as many stocks as you can. And if you have a character with as much killing power as Violet, no reason to not try to go for something early, especially while it's relatively safe for you to do so. So coming in, ooh, this will be the Sephiroth here. This is this is another button check that you're going to see, but it looks like they'll be running it back to, to Small Battlefield. Sephiroth versus Violet, the Battle of the Distance Demons for round number two, I guess. The Distance Demons, I like that one. <laughs> I like that one, that's good. Um, yeah, Sephiroth, Sephiroth, the cooler Violet. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's interesting. So with side B, he can play a, a definitely better boat game than her. Um, his moves are, it's interesting because he, he, he is just like her in the sense that he requires tipper and spacing. And they almost play relatively the same amount of distance from each other. So it's going to be an interesting match. With <laughs> well, that, well, that's just petty. <laughs> that, 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 that. <laughs> That is I, I, message sent and received, I think. All right. Uh, <laughs> like, clearly, we have no respect for each other during body <laughs> checks, so I, I, we'll see uh, how this is going to go. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really interested. Uh, like you said, they they can play very similarly. I think it's going to come down to, I guess, who can land those tippers or, or sweet spots, I should say, more frequently, because Sephiroth's sweet spot is not exactly the the tipper hitbox but uh, i mean you have that stock lead to play with as well and if byleth does not find a way to kill sephiroth quickly sephiroth's 
got a lot of damage that they can do very quickly. I mean, you get the, you get the wing in the later percent, you get that extra rage on top. There's just a lot that you have to deal with if you do not find a way to take a, a stock off of this Three, very light two, character. Sephiroth, one, I think go. one of the lighter, light S characters, not quite the lightest, right? But certainly bottom third or, or top third, I guess, in terms of lightweight. So uh, we'll have to see what Bootleg can do being down a stock. Uh, in terms of weight, he is underneath even um, Zero Suit Samus and Meta Knight. He's actually in about the same weight class as Kirby. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so like, yeah, bottom or top top five. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really bad, but he does have great frame data on Nair. Uh, the use of side B is done properly. Uh, snap is a great camping tool, right? It's, it forces great pressure, it forces them to respect everything, and even in times can work for you defensively. Having a counter as well doesn't hurt. Nice. Alright. And Bootleg, uh, Bootleg right now is still getting pretty good. Go for that back here off a ledge, not gonna be able to get anything. But like I said, there it is. The speed of that Nair and Sephiroth just helps him so much in this matchup, right? Because even though Violet does have a multi-hitting Nair that's really good, his is so fast. It's like, I, it's also his fastest option out of the field. Yeah, that, that speed, absolutely devastating. And, ooh, okay, I thought that forward smash was gonna connect for a second, but there's the up smash, there's the stock, so, down goes one for the side of Benedictine. Bootleg go at 115. Has to play pretty carefully here. That counter two also going to be very good, especially in terms of trying to do something about Bylas recovery. Because I'm not sure that Bootleg has an easy way to really try and edge guard uh, this Sephiroth. Uh, yeah, Violet doesn't have like the easiest time trying to uh, edge guard Sephiroth, especially because like, unlike the other Fire Emblem characters, she likes a counter. It also be way easier. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if she gets those those any of those hits, like down tilt, up here, near, oh, time to go for up here. Oh, nice. That's a great back here. Definitely need that. Oh, there it is. Wow. She went for a down right after. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's just saying. Oh, wow. It's spicy. Oh, that, the, the double up B on ledge, it, it's, it, it's a mix up that, I mean, I guess, you know, if you're not ready for it, you certainly take some percent for it and you get back to stage for free, but it, that move also does have a deceptive amount of knockback, but another up smash wow. going to take the stocks. And now look at this dead even. Yeah, it's absolutely dead even. It is not a situation you want to be in for uh, for uh, Benedict King. Uh, you don't want to lose this right here, especially when you were technically up. Nair to the grab. Nice. Bates out the counter. Oh, my gosh. Why did down here send him skyward? We'll never know. That's been, dangerous. If that had been a down smash, that, that was almost game. Oh, yeah. I like that. Just go for that other smash. All right. Ooh! No! Oh, no! All right, you're alive. Doesn't die to it. Ninety-four percent. I, I love the risk, but it almost didn't work out. Now a chance. Good down tilt to get under. Oh, but then they're connected, and that's gonna lead to the up air. And bootleg steals the game back, and they're gonna take the lead for St. John's. Oh, brother, you gotta tech those. I don't know what classes they offer, but uh, you need to take the tech course. <laughs> that's, that's not the way. If you do not tech against Violet, you are asking to get down tilt into up there and die. Oh my goodness. And just like that, St. Jones has put themselves back in the lead. Bootleg doing great work. Gonna be able to take that. Has one stock left. But sometimes one stock is all you need. Yeah, and on top of that too, the play around high percents right if if bootleg was able to you know i think bootleg was at a very low percent on that stock uh in that last game but there's something to be said around playing with rage you feel like okay i i'm either going to drop the stock very soon or i can use this to my advantage if i land that one big crucial hit i want land that one big punch i can you know now shift forward and, and take an extra stock or something along those lines. But Bootleg played pretty calm after dropping, I believe, that uh, that first stock. Or they got the first stock uh, in that series. But after that, I mean, 
felt like they were pretty composed overall, not too worried of, about uh, much that Mana, the Sephiroth for Benedictine, was throwing out there. Yeah, absolutely. You could, you could feel, even in like the way Blue Lake plays, uh, they don't feel pressed about like taking any options. Uh, of course, they respected like Sephiroth's Nair uh, out of shield being like one of their faster options. But then at that point, they said, all right, I'll just go for the up smash read out of shield. I'm, I'm ready to do this. Try me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that up smash too. It, it's got. It doesn't have the best of scoops, but now here we go. It's and you were saying off stream that you wanted to see some Steve gameplay. Well, you got it here in the third member of Benedictine U, the Minecraft Steve, making an appearance. Let's go, Gamma. Uh, it's just like that. Minecraft Steve is here to play, and I hope you guys are ready. He just needs to take one stop. Nice. All right, and here we are getting started. And look at that building already. <laughs> look at him go. Uh huh. Nice pressure on chips. <laughs> oh, it begins. Almost finishes that combo right there. Thirty-two percent that quickly, and, and just from stringing together just that just a small handful of moves. Oh. So, oh, the, the pressure is certainly on bootleg to make a play here. That was all up tilt. You gotta love it. Nice. <laughs> up oh, and there's a minecart. Up tilt. Oh, almost gets the ladder combo again. All right, there's a forward air. Oh my goodness, we got the setups too. All right, all right, sorry. like that. Building again. Upgrading to the stone sword. Oh no! Oh, what a bad SD to the other side. <laughs> okay. Wait, we covered up our own workbench. This is counterintuitive. <laughs> he couldn't get to the workbench to build anything. Work is closed off for the day, I guess. Now now it's open back up. Construction's been, uh, is finally done in that area. Nice. All right, guess the back here. Gonna upgrade yet again. Trying to build. Like that. Oh, my goal. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, you're edge guarding yourself. You gotta be careful in this situation. So now for Gamma though, catch. for Gamma though, this is really, really bad, right? So he's already lost his stock. And he seems to have a problem killing Bootle right there. Nice recovery though. Alright, I'll yeah, smash the whiff. You can kind of see a little bit right now that Gamma is is starting to kind of swing for the fences in terms of these big heavy hits that might be able to take a stock. And they're trying to just continue to chip away at this percent now, but they're going to need a, a few more resources and be a little bit more careful with their setups because everything right now is going bootlegs way. Oh, and there's the up no! smash again, getting stuck on that block. All right, we do have Diamond Sword. Oh, tries to read a roll. We're double forward smashing. Oh, no. There's the back there. All right, I'm going to be honest. That is like the worst possible Second worst. I'll say second worst. The worst scenario is losing all three stocks. That's the worst scenario. This is the second worst scenario. Losing two stocks against bootleg, especially one to an SD, right before your final match. Oh, no, Gamma. Not like this. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It just like Gamma was kind of like rushing the issue. Um... Like, of course, he, he camped at times, but immediately after his, uh, his building was full, he would just go right in. Um, didn't want to wait for, for Nero and Shield to kind of end. I don't know if they were trying to immediately do grab uh, once the once the Nair ended, or if they were even trying to get, like, a parry. But they got hit by that consistently, and that cost them a, a stop. Uh, and then, of course, the SD cost them another stop. So now, uh, Gamble with one stock against the last player of uh, St. John's, which I think is going to be Alamon. Alamon? It's a, it's a... Uh, Loma Mola. <laughs> oh, oh, Loma, Loma Mola. And, I, am, uh... <laughs> I am butchering that. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's all good. Hey, I I thought it was a I, I you know I I wasn't sure at first if it was a Pokemon or not, and then and I was informed yes. otherwise. So yes. it, it, that is and, indeed uh, a Pokemon. <laughs> but uh, Alomomola, 
Uh, I've seen him a couple times. Mostly goes Joker, uh, from what I've seen. But I've also seen from him in the past go Sephiroth. So we'll see which one he opts for today. And Alomomola, I think... I mean, Joker versus Steve is going to be... I don't... It's not a matchup I've seen all that frequently. But uh, I think... I mean... Uh, it's going to be tough, because one of the things is how do you deal with those blocks, and never mind, just throw all the Joker stuff out the window, you've got Byleth back on the table. <laughs> are, we, are we pulling a Byleth again? Is this... Alright, so no, uh. this is a button check, is that... Alright, so I've May seen... not be the character. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen this Steve versus uh, Joker matchup probably about two times, because in New York, of course, we have Steve's and we have Jokers. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, right? So... Joker has great movement speed, great aerials um, that he can easily get to, uh, to Steve. Uh, side B and neutral B are great tools for dealing with the blocks. Um, I think if the Joker player is playing like a, a strong rushdown game, it's very possible, right? There's a lot of mix-up between on shield, out of nair, and down tilt out as well that allows you to kind of counterplay Steve. Uh, so I think honestly the Joker yeah. matchup isn't isn't bad. I, I would I would prefer Joker over Sephiroth in this situation as well uh, because the use of Arson uh, I think is a stronger comeback than um, the Dark Wing than a One Winged Angel uh, simply because you know you can you can control when you get Arson you can't control Dark Wing Angel Dark Wing Angel just is thrust upon you at yeah. times. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Arson, you, you you counsel things correctly, you can get arson. But we're gonna see what the choice is for all. Uh, I'm gonna just call Mola right now. I'm sorry, Loma Mola. I'm gonna just pronounce <laughs> half the name so I don't trip myself up. But we're gonna see. It, it, it'll be interesting to, to see. And, and you were saying earlier, you know, sometimes all you need is one stock. Well, that's all that's all that Gamma's got here is that one stock. Uh, and, and here's the thing: if Gamma starts to land those up tilt combos and starts to, you know, maybe get those uh, horizontal combos too, just kind of walk them across the stage with those aerials that they can get. I mean, it's two characters that can do a lot of damage if they get their one combo, if they get that setup. So we'll have to see who can get to that point first here as we're going to have two SDs to start us off, but Battlefield the stage, and one stock is all Alomomola needs here to take set number one. All right, I'll be honest. Right now, it's looking like the Hail Mary play from Benetton University. Oh, but there's the up tilts. Not going to be able to finish the combo. Oh, but we get it again. Oh, and he's so close to, like, finishing the combo, but he never quite getting it done. Oh, there's the up smash. Great. And like I said again, Arson already out. But right now, Gamba is taking great control of everything. Come on. 82% and practically unscathed for it, too. The down air, wow. that's just going to kill off the top. He dies at 105, so wow. one stock down, and I don't even remember when he took the 1% there. That was a long time ago, seemingly, so Gamma, that was a, a very strong start, just what they needed. Mm -hmm. All right, but there's a grab. Drag down up here. It's a back of great strings. Oh, there it is. Blocks it away, but there's a back here forcing the situation. Forward air gonna take him off. Gonna get hit by card though. So, one thing I noticed here is that uh, Gamma immediately off of this stock, much earlier, did they get diamond and gold, or, or at least diamond in this case, uh, on deck in terms of their equipment. They focused a lot more on that on this stock, but they're still in a lot of trouble here at 112. Absolutely, and they still haven't been able to get to their workbench to get the full diamond item. So even though they have diamond, if you can't get to that workbench, it does not matter what you got to stop. Oh, does it go for the down tilt? Does it go for the forward smash? Okay. Oh, and finally, diamond on deck. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Those arson empowered special moves gonna do great work. But not gonna be able to get the kill while in arson. Oh, that down to almost too fake. Wow! That cart knock 
That cart knockback is always so surprising to me. And oh, no. uh oh, up tilt combo. Oh, no. 46. Oh, no. oh, one of the back air there instead. Thought an up smash was going to come out. Dash attack's not going to do it. He's at 180 here. That was a great change up on that up B to get back on stage. Yeah, be careful, because right now. Oh, the back air! Alright. Okay. That was cool. That was cool. Uh, that was almost the Hail Mary play right there from Gambit. I respect it. I thought, I thought that was a cart instead of a block for a second. I thought he was going to get out of it. I thought that was, that's how close it was. Uh, I mean, because if the cart comes out, you might tank through that back air and survive. Yeah. He, he actually, um, if he had started cart instead of doing block, he definitely actually would have tanked through it. Um, the hyper armor coming out, I think like frame five, six. Man, don't quote me though. Don't quote me. Yeah. But yeah, he should he should have been able to get through it. But he went for a block instead, and then um, Alamola just committing to the back here right there. It was great, man, just to get the kill. Uh, so game one is going to go to St. John's, but they have to be careful because game one looks like they were they were getting back into the groove of things, and this easily could have been the turnaround story. For them. Yeah, it was very, very close. Came down to came down to last stocks, but I mean, when you start off a game like that with only one stock, it, it can be it, it can be a, a hard hill to climb, and in that case, just a little too much. But I think the biggest key from game number one to game number two was that they were able to get the equipment online faster, and they were able to take that stock, that first stock, so quickly. It felt like. Uh, Aloma Mola needed his own kind of warm up to to get back into into the swing of things because eventually they took that stock. But when he died at I think one sixty or so percent, he died, before he, that back di air. he died at one hundred five to to down air from Steve at the first stop, and then second stock I think was one sixty. It was about one sixty. Right. Yeah. So yeah, no, it, 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 it was it was almost bad. It was almost very bad, yeah. Right. But like I said again, you know, if you're a three stock, you have a you have a two stock lead against someone, especially with a character like Joker, it's very hard to kind of throw that away, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so no, they turned it around. They adjusted well. Uh, hopefully for them, that was also their kind of warm up game since they didn't have too much time to play. So maybe we see Al Mola uh, play it a little bit better next time. We're going to see, right? Because Betty Dick team didn't go down, didn't go down easy. They literally only lost this by one stop. So potentially we might see a lineup change. Maybe have someone else go first. Um, maybe even for me, if I'm if I'm feeling it, I might pull Gamma first. Just just to throw up everything, throw up the odds. Maybe throw up Gamma first and force them to bring out their anchor immediately, or force out some immediate adjustments. Because I think Steve into Byleth is very good in my opinion. Um, and Steven to uh, Steven to Joker again. I think it's a 50-50. Most people won't agree with me, but I think it's like a 50 match. I think. It's and then your other matchup there is uh, possibly potentially uh, EJJ, the first player, uh, the Diddy Kong, Steven to Diddy Kong, which is that one's. I feel like I don't like. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like playing against Diddy Kong if I'm playing Steve. I, yeah. I, no. I think Steve Steve does really bad against like rushdown characters like that, which is why I think like Joker, Diddy Kong, Meta Knight. I think those are like really good characters in him. Um, but yeah, so hopefully yeah. maybe maybe we'll see. We'll we'll see. Uh, and here's the other thing too. I mean, uh, we're actually getting word it is going to be Gamma versus EJJ for the very first set. So that is going. So here's the thing. <sighs> It, it, it's actually interesting <laughs> that that Benedict, uh, Benedictine, they make the adjustment lineup-wise, and they say, okay, we're going to put the Steve in first. And St. John's, they they basically said, well, we won the first set. It was close, but EJJ going in first worked last time. So let's rock with the with the Diddy Kong once again. So we are probably going to get that, that Diddy Kong versus uh, Steve matchup. Now, we, we I've also seen EJJ go Rob. But like you said, it will probably be the Diddy Kong this time around. And I don't know. Uh, that's going to be it's going to be interesting to watch because I think EJJ is also a player that the longer they play, 
the the better they they get which you could say about a lot of players but i mean like in terms of the game itself like you you just give them enough time to adapt and they will figure out the plan and they will be able to take stocks very quickly so we'll have to see whether or not they come out of the gate swinging here or if they opt to play more passive because remember that first game that they played uh against kid and the meta knight fast-paced gameplay did not work out early for them mm. And then as that set went on, it got closer and closer when they started to play a little bit more passively. Yeah, absolutely. I think Kid definitely had like one of the strongest reads on just uh, on just EJJ's like play style in general. Uh, I think I think I think the Meta Knight got to use Banana more than Diddy yeah, Kong yeah, did. actually. The entire match. He's like, man, they should give me a banana in the next Smash game. Bro. Like it, it was it, it was very good awareness. Of, of like just pattern that he had um but yeah wow i'm mad i i called the gamma the gamma going to first the <laughs> gift of foresight and prophecy but let's see let's see how gamma does into ejj get it started game two potentially the last game for benedictine if they do not win now all right nice and here we are with a regular battlefield instead of small battlefield interesting choice but i think potentially small battlefield was one of the bands so this would make sense nice nice oh oh and the banana actually messing up the up tilt combo right here kirk gonna land as well and here's a combo opener good grab there on the banana too but they won't get any follow-up off of that forward air just a quick trade and percent still even here early but Right now, players just trading right now. Nothing too crazy. A lot of these players, both of them playing a real campy play style because they realize, oh snap, Diddy Kong might just combo me to death. And then Diddy Kong's like, oh snap, Steve might just combo me to death. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, neither man. one neither one wants to be in that, that window. And... <laughs> oh, they still have the, banana. The <laughs> wow, banana off the brick right there into the up smash. All right, and so this is also Diddy, Diddy's problem. Most of his projectile options, uh, Banana doesn't really break blocks. Uh, Peanut Gun can break the block, but it, oh, a footstool? Wow! Wow! What a way to lose your first stop. That's, tra <laughs> that's tragic, too, because uh, uh, Gamma was in the lead there in terms of percent. So that's a that's a huge window gone. And now Gamma's got to find a way to make a play here. They got Diamond now, but I'm able to find that forward smash. Do they get the follow up here? <laughs> I actually wow. love the mix up there. Yo. Just full confidence that they would not be able to track down the no mash. <laughs> wow. Oh, nice, good pairing of the banana. Not gonna be able to punish. All right, we're at 147. We just need one hit. Oh, it gets wake up attack. But wake up cart will do it. Nice. Go back up those resources in the corner. But then he called just, how do I approach? <laughs> He's like, banana? <laughs> 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 oh, tries to go for the near mix up on shield. There's a throw, doesn't confirm in the dash attack at all. Oh, great shield. And there's this game of like, all right, I need you to mess up, please. <laughs> please, monkey flipping through the guards. I don't know. How often has EJJ played against this team matchup? I need to know. I, I, I don't know, but... You know, we've seen... We saw early... It's odd. We saw early that EJJ knew about the... the you throw the barrels at the uh, at the wall that Steve farm, farms behind. And that just eliminates the wall. But since then, has not opted to use the barrels and nearly eating a down air there for it. But they've got the percent lead, so still in a good spot. Did they get this edge guard. Oh, good setup there, but just doesn't quite get that nair hitbox. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Nice. Good. Down to in the back here. Very good stream. Oh, gonna punch that into the forward smash. And right now, EJJ looking pretty good. I like this. He's like, you know what? If you want to play lane, I'm absolutely willing to do it with you. I don't mind. Nice. Dash attack into up here. Then go back for the banana. The key to all neutral is potassium, fellas. Oh. Oh, my goodness. That was insane. Oh, 
Let me see the end. You gotta be careful though. That shield's looking a little bit like a skin on. Oh, and the dash attacks aren't landing either. And yep, just patient play again. Back and forth. There's the there's the up B with the parry and no follow up. Oh, tried to catch him jumping and did, but he caught him jumping away instead of in. And right now, EJ James just willing to play the patient game, trying to get those mix ups on shield with banana. Alright, Gamma has no he has no materials at all, so he can't use a block to delay any uh any recoveries whatsoever. He wants to get distance right now. He also is still stuck with wood, so he doesn't have any killing power. Oh my goodness, he may have just killed himself. Alright, man, just to get back. Oh! Cloud Smash not gonna be able to kill. Steve so actually. <laughs> I'm in shock that worked, but it but it did. And uh, it gets it gets Gamma back to stage. Another tricky setup, the roll around, but that's gonna be the stock. The up smash was greedy, and EJJ knew it. Oh, that's a two zero against Gamma. All right, and now EJJ is going to go into the next match with a two stock lead. Like I said, I do think uh, EJJ played that fantastically well. Uh, if you can force the Steve to basically use up their resources and then not have to, uh, and not have to like rush your own game plan against them, it works out really well. He's like, wait, if he never comes at me, how can I kill him? <laughs> how does this work? <laughs> you know? So honestly, congratulations right there to, uh, to EJJ taking it 2-0. Like I said, I do think that Kong does play well. It's Steve. I think, I think he showed right there the potential. Central maybe. But man, that is not good. You do not want to lose Gamma without taking more than one stop. And they do this time. So Benedictine is left now with just Kid and Nomen. Or Momen. Momen? Monen. 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 I pronounced it incorrectly yet again. My goodness. <laughs> it's it's all good. I mean, this is a this is a Benedictine squad that is, I think, relatively new, like we said, and it, it's I mean it's it's fantastic to see that they are that they are undefeated four and zero, uh, but St. John's. I mean, this is a, a squad that is it's got a lot of experience. They they've mm. been here in the ECAC for a, a good chunk of time, and they they've got some players that have you know been been on been on the grind, I guess. And EJJ is one of those kind of newer players in the roster who's kind of benefited from that experience. But we'll have to see how they do against kid once again and this time they start a stock down remember kid was able to take this set last time with an extra stock uh, uh, on their back so well, maybe a little bit closer this time around this is a button check that we're gonna get once again between these two but meta knight diddy kong again i think the slower paced this game is the more it benefits ejj but kid i think one of the big things was that kid was not afraid to pull the trigger on some early kill moves. Think back to those uppies that we saw just kind of mm -hmm. seemingly out of nowhere, but also very close to landing. So oh, yeah. look for those uh, as the set goes on. Yeah, absolutely. Kid, Kid wasn't afraid to press the issue against EJJ. And with a character as fast as Meta Knight, um, being able to enforce that base against Diddy Kong is very good. And I think EJJ does like actually uh, a slower, a slower pace uh, game. Right, uh, I think he just showed that even against Gamma, despite playing the most we considered just like a rushdown mix-up character, uh, he played it really slow. Right, and I think that's kind of what he favors. And Kid might just be the antithesis to that. He's just like, ah, it's time to go in. It's time. It's time to fight. Come on. He's he's the he's the the, the Fox Kirby. I mean the Fox Meta Knight from the from the from the show. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to see. So, one stock gone, Battlefield the, the stage, and here we go, who comes out on top between Kid and EJJ, early, Aww. early up B, and, yep, just quick damage, not gonna go for the up air strings, just take the up smash right off the bat, get that early percent lead. Alright, that, that was almost two, uh, in case you're wondering, I'm going to start keeping count of how many times Kid uses banana against EJJ in this match. Oh, there's yep. two! <laughs> oh my Grabs goodness! It again. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, and the parry! Oh! What? That was, that was so smart, too, because he thinks that, okay, I'll throw out the banana hitbox there, and even if he catches it, I'll throw out an aerial, and he parries it! And that's mm -hmm. just, that was just so smart by Kid in that moment. Nice, Quick back here out of shield. Oh, tries to use Tornado to catch a jump from ledge. Not gonna happen, though. All right, yeah, Kid is, Kid must have a lot of experience playing against Diddy Kong. Because a lot of the, the choices and options you're making are just so great at just dealing with the character. Oh, almost gets the Nero shield. Oh, five. Yo, yeah. Oh, my yep. God. Ooh, and not enough height. Yep, that was really well done by Kid there. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I feel like Kid has to have some previous experience in this matchup. So, oh. Oh, wow! He, he fell, fell out. out. I I'm in shock. I mean, I know I it's a multi hit, think... but that is, that was a, that was the strangest fallout of up smash I've I've seen. Oh yeah, you know you know it's, it's that's a uh, that's main character time, bro. <laughs> it's, it's time. Oh, nice back here. Remember, he does still have banana in hand. I thought he was oh, gonna pull wow. trigger he on fell the again? All right, this, is, bro. this is some plot armor you almost feel like for the side of for the side of kid trying to be the diddy kong slayer here is going down oh the trade okay a stock okay. traded for a stock there with the barrels but a little bit of blood drawn on the side of benedicti listen, listen, we'll take it we'll we'll let our enemy cut flesh so we can take bone <laughs> and right there kid kid showing off just a clinic against EJJ yet again. My man said, yeah, I too old you in bracket. It's time for you to go to losers, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's a good try. It's a good try. But I, I have to check. Does St. John have a Diddy Kong player on the team that just did, that wasn't on the roster tonight? Because uh, my man seemed to have all the answers to every question. Yeah, he, he really did. I mean, even the, the banana trap setup that we talked about, right? The parry on that banana toss, that was so, that seemed like the right option for VJJ after, you know, saying, okay, he's getting to the banana before me. That's fine. Yeah. I'll use it as a hitbox instead. And then to recognize exactly that moment and be like, okay, I'll just, if I get the timing right, I, I get the punish. And lo and behold, he's got the punish for it. So I just kid with solid reads back to back and now i mean you lose that stock which is unfortunate but i mean ejj he, he did the work to to get to that percent and the barrels just traded it's just an unfortunate spot i guess for for kid there so now that's actually a huge stock too because now the lead is still in saint john's favor and kid who had the reads that match is now down a stock, and you get to counterpick this Meta Knight. And Meta Knights, I mean, a very light character. They can die very quickly to a lot of what St. John's can throw at you. Absolutely. Uh, most of St. John's characters have, like, really good killing power. Um, people don't forget, once, once Joker goes Arsene, he just suddenly starts murdering everyone on the cast <laughs> for some reason. So, yeah. So, like, between that and Violet, who have two heavy hitters, uh, potentially, uh, or you can even do another pick. Who knows what other characters the uh, Saint John has uh, in store? And then, of course, you have a you have a you have a stock lead, which allows you to mess around with that. Uh, but potentially, this could be if you have the right character. This could be a tool against Kid. But remember, even last time, Kid was able to take a stop, uh, even on his second bout around before he was taken out. So we're gonna see if history repeats itself yet again against bootleg and it, and it was bootleg that they were able to take the stock off of in that previous uh set so we'll have to see if like you said if if kid can pull something out of their bag of tricks here and get benedictine back into the match because remember i mean there's still two players left for both sides but benedictine are trying to remain undefeated just like St. John's, but they are at the deficit. They need to take the next two sets and down a stock here. We'll have to see who comes out on top. Yep. Nice. And great confers right kid right into the ladder combo. Not gonna get that third up here, but this is gonna work out too. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, we are rushing. Nice, good dash attack. 
So Kid is doing great at like just getting in the range. The dash attack is actually just becoming unreactable, right? So now you're forced to guess between either a grab, because Meta Knight doing run up grab is incredibly good, or him doing run up dash attack, right? And forcing the guess between each one of those is pretty bad, because they both could essentially just set you up for a combo. Right? Right, there's the up tilt. And they're falling there. Oh, wow. This Kid is right. everywhere right now. He's <laughs> just covering every option. Just go. He's going. He's going down the checklist, saying, "Okay, you didn't roll that. Check that one off. Okay, I'll cover the jump next. Didn't jump. Okay, still holding shield. I'll go in now." And that's just. It's just one after the other after the other. And Bootleg just does not have the speed to really answer back right now. Yeah. If anything, I will say, Kid is a master of like taking the information of a player's habits immediately and just adjusting his game plan to it. And when it got to like Meta Knight where you have to, at certain times, like you have to react and tech chase immediately, it's very important that a player is able to do that. So right now you can see why the character works so well for kids. Oh, and there's a tornado interrupting the neutral beat. Run up forward smash. You can't shoot me with an arrow, baby girl. Wow. And the Nair on the edge guard to, to finish it all off. Just off of two neutral bees. Seemed like a safe enough option at the time, but outpaced right now is Bootleg. And if they don't find a way to take this stock, that's a huge turnaround in this set. Bootleg's got to find something. Back throw's not going to do it quite yet. And they'll avoid the arrow as well. Kid knows how parallel the stock could be. That's huge. That's, there's the forward tilt to get it back to even. So... Now, last stocks here for both of these players, and the loser of this has to send in their third and final member. Nice, good through right there from Bootleg. Oh, and the side be gonna wave. No punish though. Right. Oh, goes with the penalty right there. All right. So Bootleg, Bootleg does have to be careful. They have 44 percent, which means there's still time for Meta Knight to get about one more combo string. It's actually probably one of the more optimal percents for him to have a middleweight character at. Oh, nice. 79. Oh, yeah. And we are tech chasing. Where are you going? Oh, we're going oh, deep. deep. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> kid, kid quite literally just running bullet off of the stage out of sheer fear. <laughs> like, all right, too fast. I can't do this. Get me out of here. And, and yeah, no, like actually just chased him down the entire stage, got the tech read too. That was really impressive, my kid. And then all the way down to the blast zone. And Byleth, that tether recovery's got some range to it. That is a, a, a ridiculous upbeat at times. Like that, that distance they can cover is insane. So it seemed like a decent play from Bootleg there. It wasn't a half bad option to dip that low, but those tether recoveries are susceptible and uh, uh, just just not quite in range. They even still had their jump afterwards too. Yeah. Like it, it, they they had the right play. They just misspaced it. Uh, and now look at the swing that we just saw. Benedictine is now in the lead mm -hmm. with one stock still on Kid, who on this Meta Knight is looking fantastic. Hey, yeah, Kid's Red Knight is definitely looking strong. He's definitely pulling his weight right now. That's two eliminations right uh, for him. Uh, potentially, if he even gets a stock on this, he sets his team up for a really, really good situation. Uh, he's doing his best Michael Myers impression, <laughs> chasing Byleth to, to the edge <laughs> of the screen as she runs away screaming. Uh, so let's see, right? So now the last, uh, the last player for uh for St. John's is going to be yeah. still. most likely a Loma Mola uh, or at oh, least if it will a Loma Mola was the player that we saw last set uh yes. step in and the Sephiroth this time around not the ah, Joker okay okay does not want to go into a battle of speed against Meta Knight I see Three, two, I think we're gonna do a button check first, so we go straight into it. Well, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh. Okay. Oh no, I I think a little more is ready to just go go right into it. Fight. 
Yeah, PS2 is the stage, so, yep, there's yep. the taunt, and now we're getting into it. So one stock for Alomomola to try and take to get down to Benedictine's last, and Kid, they've done their job. They've, they've gotten down to St. John's last player, but can they get anything more? Absolutely. Nice, goes with the dash tackle shield. All right, so now the beauty again of this match is, of course, like, Ben Knight whiz. He, he's able to get in, like, right? You time anything between, like, forward here, you can go in underneath, like, the weak part of forward here and potentially, like, just get a punish from underneath. Oh, nice. But Loma Momo realizes, man, he's like, all right, listen, I, I played this match. I know I have the tricky. I, I love that setup there, recognizing, hey, that up B is going to connect. And then going for the up B follow, or side B was going to connect, and then the, the follow up with the up B. And those side Bs are wow. doing so much, and the sweet spot there of back air is just going to take it. And Loma Moa has pushed us to game number three. Look at that. My man immediately, he said, I just want to see the separate off wind screen, bro. I just, let's, let's, let's not waste too much time. Let's do this. Let's do this. And wow, that was amazing from Loma Moa right there. Quick, quickly takes the stop, doesn't lose any stocks of his own, leaving us with a three, three, in terms of stocks, just a, it's a final first to one. Anchor versus Anchor. Who's going to finish the job? Who you got? Well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Benedictine, I mean, last time, the, <laughs> the last player that we've seen today for Benedictine was uh, Monum, who was the other Sephiroth player for the side of Benedicti. So they know that Alomomola is locked in for the Sephiroth for, for this upcoming match. Do they risk ditto, the ditto, Sephiroth ditto? Ditto, 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 ditto. Ditto, ditto. Run it. I, I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I'd be I'd be very interested to see because, again, I mean, I mean Sephiroth, I've not seen a Sephiroth ditto, but I think... Between these two, the way that they played, it could be it could be a lot of fun. And the Loma Mola too, I mean, I mean, just had a really solid game plan. I think coming into that Mennonite set, I mean, you only needed to take one stock, but the side B stuffed out a lot of the grounded options that Kid really looked for early in that set. And then all of a sudden, you're a very light Mennonite character going up against Sephiroth. Hey! And and we get the ditto here. A huge turning point. Remember, if Ma Monum needs to win this set to push us to a set number three. Otherwise, St. John's is walking away with the W. Okay. All right, so this is this is actually called the Little John set, right? Okay. <laughs> because, because they both trying to snap their fingers. See, look at that. Snap <laughs> your fingers. <laughs> look at that. Oh, OK. Nice. This is that attack. And that shield is looking like a Skittle. Oh, but I'm saying, listen, I've been in this situation. I'm the coolest ever all. I snap my fingers better than you, bro. Oh, almost gets clipped by the up beam. Nice. And there's the spot dodge again. And look at the snapping of the fingers. Look at them go. Just both just poking out right now. Still even, or just about even in percents. But the turnaround, and it's... Monum with stage control, dash attack's gonna land, but it's still not enough to take that stock. And now the wing is out. Ooh, tries to read the roll right there. Very good. All right, sometimes not reacting is the best reaction, people. Just, just stand still and watch your opponent fumble. All right, they both have the one winged form out right now. Oh, and there's the counter. Remember. So even if I don't counter anything, my hit will still come out. Oh! Ooh. Yep. All right, so there, there's a little bit of time, right? Where after the active part of the counter, if it doesn't hit anything, you don't get the ivory. And then the actual physical hit will come out. So look at this. Sephiroth won a Sephiroth's worst matchup. Skate and Bleach. Forward tilt. That'll, that'll answer right back. So tie game once again. And I don't know. I mean,. It, <laughs> It's one of those odd things where because you have the same tools, it's hard to tell who has the advantage, but right now, Olomola has just kind of got a few more strings together. 
Yeah, it's, def it's definitely more of like who can just utilize the character better. And right now, Omoa, uh, actually in a, about a 15% deficit. Uh, I will say Monom is definitely better, I think, at running the neutral with this character. But in terms of like combo game, uh, I do think a Loma Moa might have the edge right there. Oh, nice. Good. There's a forward throw. Oh, there's a forward tilt. Oh! Oh! And he tried it. The footstool was almost ridiculous. If he didn't have that wing, that actually might have been the stock potentially there. Oh, but the throw oh. in the back air. Yep. Well done by Loma Moa. The second that hitbox came out, you knew he was right in the danger zone. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's like, oh, he's gonna do a nice jump. Wow! Wow. What an explosion. And look at this, we are down to last stop. Can Monem bring it back for Benedictine right now? Or will they be going home to losers? Let's see it. It all rides on a Sephiroth ditto. Who would have thought? All right. It is, it is uh, Monem in the lead. Or sorry, that's uh, Eloma Mole in the lead. Oh no. And right now, it's not looking good for Monum. Already at 86%. You gotta remember, Sephiroth is a very light character. So any one of these, like, forward tilts, back here, forward here, could potentially kill. Nice. Oh, there he is. He's just covering all the rollings with there. Oh, oh, snap your fingers, brother. Just keep doing it. That's what little John would have wanted. I feel like that dash attack is going to be so devastating here. It's so much knockback on that move, and it comes out pretty quickly as well. But oh my goodness. Monum on the, oh. on the corner, and the forward tilt right in the sweet spot of that forward oh. tilt. And Aloma Mola cleans it up. Aloma Mola gets the job done in the Sephiroth ditto and oh. takes the set for St. John's. They win 2-0 over Benedictine University. Wow, 2-0 win over Benedictine. Good stuff to St. John. Sadly, brothers, you have to go back to Bible study and then decide what we're going to do next. Uh, I think that's going to put them, I think, either second seed. It depends on how the rest of the, the matches go. But that first place seed is no longer available for Benedictine. And right now, St. John's is going to continue with an amazing win streak of five. Oh, oos. That's good. That's good. That's really good. And I think, are we going to be able to get one of the players for an interview? We'll see. We'll see. We'll take a short break to figure out that information. But until then, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Inspiring others to follow in any environment, at any scale. It's not for everyone, but if you want to learn and make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an army officer. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, as soon as he out and finished this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying to live. Oh my God, it's real big. Stayed up on the ground and the cars is real big. I gotta do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live.
Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do, that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The hype. All right, and welcome back, everyone. Of course, it is again your host with the most acoustics, joined with me by the lovely, the great, the gracious Soy. And that you just saw right here, saw right right here five of the EC. Of the EC. EC. And right now we have right now we have the team captain, captain for John, for, John, uh, for uh, Saint John, for Saint John, uh, Titko. Uh, Titko. Hello, how are Hello. you? How are you? Doing? I'm doing great today, and after that first that win, we're feeling even better. Ooh, we started out spicy. Okay, okay. I'm gonna draw off the first question for you. You guys are now five in the series, right? Do you think you can keep an undefeated streak leading off all the way to the end of qualifiers? I believe so. My team's so stacked. My team's so cracked. We just um. We just went to NJCU this past weekend, and we got third place there in a, their crew battle tournament. So we're riding that high wave, and we're just going to keep riding it until the all the way to the end. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you guys came out certainly showed it today. This was a, a, a lot closer of a, of a of a match in your previous couple series. I mean, the only team who's been able to take a set from you was uh, University of Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns. I mean, I mean, in a close match like this, what's kind of the game plan? Is there any kind of mentality that you guys take towards these closer matchups towards the four O uh, squads that you see here? So a lot of the times when we're in these situations, we just take every stock one by one. You know, we don't really let the previous stock affect us. And it's just like, you know, just keep moving on. It happens. You lost the stock. Just keep going. Keep playing. You know, just keep keep that good mentality and just keep trucking. And if we lose, we lose. If we win, we win. But you can't let the what happened to the previous stock affect you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, would you and say this is say like this uh, is your like, second strongest second lineup, lineup uh, on, uh, this on this of rotation players, of players? Or is this not even, like, this your not strongest even like your strongest lineup? This would probably be in our third tier for the lineup. Um, we probably have two or three more different lineups that we have that are stronger. So I'm excited to try and bust out that that top, top one for the finals 
okay. exciting to see. Uh, and uh, I guess my, my question for you. So set number one, very close. What was the adjustment uh, or the gameplay for you guys headed into set number two? I mean, I know there wasn't a whole ton of lineup change, of lineup but what was, change, what was the discussion like? like? The discussion was really just, um, you know, we knew the Meta Knight was going to be a problem. The Meta Knight was going to be a problem and that we had to really keep him at bay. And then we took into account a lot of the bad habits we saw on set number one. A lot of DI ins, a lot of DI reads. And because it's online, you know, they're going to fall into the same habits that they always do. So it's hard to adapt uh, mid game in an online setting. So we just took what we learned from set one and said, hey, he, you know, if he does this, he's going to DI in. So be ready for the follow up. And then we're always around, you know, we're keeping the vibes up. We never try and let any bad stock really get to us. We're always just trying to keep the vibes lively and make sure that the positive energy is around so we can clutch up. Okay. okay. Well, that's really it for that's questions really for me. Uh, anything else for you, sir? I guess, uh, I guess uh, no, that's really, uh, really uh, I guess my last guess my question last for you, question for uh, you. Uh, while you're here while you're with here, us, is there anyone you'd like to shout out? Anyone you'd like to thank? The floor is essentially yours. I want to shout out my manager, Denny. She's been doing a great job making sure she uh we're all on the same page that we're here for games that we're here for that we're mentally ready that we're eating they're hydrated and everything i want to shout out my school valorant team that's been super super um supportive with us and uh they actually took me on as a manager so i asked also a manager of the valorant team and finally i want to shout out uh jay grunt and the, the grunt gang you know they always have great merch and they always have great players for us to practice with their crew battle squad. So it really helps us with this crew battle format to know tips and tricks and little things to, to know. And, you know, Mr. L, one of our best players is the founder of grunt. So I just want to shout them out for giving us great practice all the time. All right. Well, thank you for even coming up on here. Tico. Thank you again. You guys are absolutely thank you for having us. Of course. It's great to have you. And all right, guys, that is it for uh, our interview. Uh, of course, again, you guys can check out Tico while his, uh, at his right here on the side. Uh, and that is it. St. John's taking that 5-0, and that will end week five of ECAC qualifiers for super smash bros crew battle league and i gotta say this is showing up to be uh some intense setups right here we have a 5-0 team now the question is next week will they be able to keep it up yeah it, that is a that is the big question i mean listen if they've got if this is the third string squad if this is the third lineup and they're still able to play this well I can't wait to see what yeah. the first string lineup looks like because that is going to be a dangerous squad. It was a close one here against Benedictine U, but still, if there are still some powerhouses in their pockets, uh, this is going to be a squad to watch out for. Still three weeks left of the regular season, though. Yeah, absolutely. My man hit us with the freezer and said, this is not even my final four. <laughs> I was shocked, flabbergasted, and bamboozled. But you know what? That's what I like to be. And I think we are going to end it off here, guys. I think we have even more coming up. So stick tuned to the channel. I'm your boy, Acoustics. Soy. And you follow folks. us at the Twitters. <laughs> follow me on the Twitter, baby. That's it. Good night. Frank's Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. <laughs> Skip entry level. Decide to lead. As an army officer. What will you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. <laughs> The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. 
you sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? Working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. Becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make. Because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Inspiring others to follow in any environment, at any scale. It's not for everyone, but if you want to learn and make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an army officer. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just start I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying to little. My God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got two bit. On my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on Shamu. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the 